Hello there guys, welcome back to another c -sharp tutorial. In the previous video we had a look at uh, data binding and how we can connect a data credit view to our data set using uh, a binding source. Okay, And today we will investigate how to bind other controls. Now, the data grid view has the advantage of displaying all the records for you and has the advantage of enabling you to modify uh, multiple records uh, and saving the changes once. Okay, But in some cases the data grid view is not suitable to display lots of um, information if the columns and the table, um, uh, the number of columns in the table is, is large. Okay, so let us try to modify our code here and uh, see how we can uh, bind uh, this. Uh, uh, sorry, bind, uh, display details and what controls can we bind? So first, I'm gonna remove the pre the controls in the previous example. So I'm selecting these and hitting delete. Uh, also, I'm deleting these guys over here, and I will go to the form and remove all the extra code there okay there we go and let me go here and just build the application to make sure it is working fine and we have two errors let's see uh, oops I deleted this bracket okay and there is one error I suppose um, Yep, and it is solved. Okay, so now this one is working fine. And uh, what we have, just a reminder, uh, well, actually, we have a, a database. Uh, let me see here. This is our database. Okay. And it contains a table called users. Uh, and these are the records in users table okay so these are the records this is just a reminder okay and what we did in the previous video uh, we created a data set so I'm gonna double click on the XD, uh, XSD file here and this is our data set as you can see uh, these are the columns the, this is the details of the methods uh, of the adapter so far so good and uh, let's go to our uh, data sources window. Now, in the previous videos, you saw me all the time. I am dragging this one and dropping it here, and the wizard creates all these controls for you, right? So, uh, by default, the wizard uh, tries or actually creates. Uh, a data grid view for you and the reason for that is the current selection if you look behind this little can you will find there is a grid this represents a data grid view however if you click the arrow over here you can find there is something called details so I'm gonna click that and now you can see this icon changes so now if I drag and drop this one over here you will find that there was a created or the designer created for you a number of controls but this time it didn't add a uh, data grid view instead it added a number of text boxes okay and we can test these so I'm going on this okay and uh, yeah you can see I'm navigating uh, the records it's very straightforward right so now we, what we want to do is to bind create this form manually and bind it manually we don't want to depend too much on the designer because in many cases you will need to modify things your own way so I'm gonna delete these guys and also these guys as well okay and yeah I think I will remove these extra methods as well now uh, what you will find is that most of the techniques I used when binding a data grid view applies here so the first thing if you remember we created a 
a data set. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this and drop it on the form. I will rename that to uh, DS. Okay, so a short for data set. And uh, I will create a table adapter. So this is gonna be TA. Okay, short for table adapter. Okay, now we need to create our, uh, you know, form. So to uh, make things a little bit more organized, I'm going to use a control called table layout. If you go here, table layout panel, and I'm going to put one here, and I will edit the rows and columns of that one. So we have user ID and you have your username and age. So uh, basically we need three rows. Okay, I'll make them all have the same percentage of height. Okay, and we need two columns, one displaying the label and the other displaying the text box that is used to fold the values. So I'm gonna hit OK. And uh, yeah, I'll put this one here. Okay, maybe make it like this. Okay, and yeah, this kind of large, but anyway, uh, you get the idea. So we'll drag and drop a label here, another label here, another label here. So this is gonna be what you need to do is go to the text property. I'm gonna say person. Oops, person ID. And press enter. Uh, let me select the second one. Is going to be person name, okay, and there's going to be person age. Uh, and so far, we didn't do anything related to database uh, when we started putting these controls. These are just you know controls. We didn't do any bindings binding so far. We are just organizing the user interface. That's it. So now we go and add three text boxes. So this is the first one. Uh, I, will, I am clicking control, dropping the second and the third. Now, to make things a little bit more organized, uh, I'm gonna press shift and click on these controls and go to the anchor property and change it to left and right. And hit enter, and you see now they are placed uh, like this. And uh, it's kind of, you know, if you look at it, well, looks fine I suppose anyway so now we need to link uh, these guys to our data set so I'm gonna click on the first one and if you look for data source here you won't find one but instead you'll find at the very top there is something called data binding with a plus right so you click on that plus and let us go and click on the text. So text here is none. It means that the text is not bound to any column in the, in the in a table. Okay. So you open that. You open other data sources. You open this one. You select the data set. You select the table. And from the table you select the column. So you click that. Now this one's kind of different from the data uh, the data grid view. Data grid view you change the data so, uh, sorry sorry uh, in the data grid view you uh, sorry uh, you change that to binding source and in the binding source you change the data source and you selected the table uh, uh, to, to be the data set and the data member will represent the table right but here for the textbooks if you have a look here what do you see you see it wrote something like ds for the data set dash and then the table name uses and then the column name so this binds the first uh, uh, column and if we try to run this okay uh, so far there is nothing because we didn't load anything so let me bind the others I'm sorry let me just bind these quickly and this one open this one this binds to the second and let's go Open this one, open this one, this one, this one, and binds to the. Okay, so now I've uh, I, now all these are bound. Uh, I need also to fill the buffer or the data set. Uh, so here I'm gonna say ta dot full, and here this is gonna be ts dot users. 
okay, and close the bracket and semicolon. So this one fills the buffer. So now if I run this code, I can see the values, right? I can see the values. Now, so far so good. This is very easy, very straightforward. But the problem here is now, well, how do I navigate between records? There is no way for me to know that. And the solution to this problem is to use a binding navigator. So, if you remember, we had the same problem with the data grid view when we had uh, two uh, when we had two data grid views and we used the binding navigator. One of them was moving uh, uh, through the record and the other was not. The reason was the second one, which was moving through the record, uh, was connected to a binding source. Okay, so this means that we need to add a binding source to our uh, form and connect these to the binding source, not the data set directly. Okay, so now we are gonna drag this and drop it here, and this is gonna be BS for binding source. Okay, and for the binding source, we will select our data set, nice, and we will select the table. So far, so good. Now let's go back here and we are gonna change this a little bit. So in the data binding. Uh, we are gonna uh, sorry we are gonna select the binding source and we will select user ID okay the second one it will be binding source username and the third one is gonna be binding source user age so now we have these three guys okay connected without problem so let me now run this okay it's working uh, and we are still not navigating. Now the reason for not navigating at all is that we didn't add the controls needed to navigate between records. So for this we will need a binding navigator. So I'm gonna drag this one and drop it here. Uh, as soon as I do that you see this navigation at the top. Uh, now for the binding navigator uh, we have two properties. We have uh, Actually, we have this property. Uh, it is the binding source. I just select that, and I suppose that's it, right? And now you see that I can navigate between the records. Okay, so we now created the control or the form the way the wizard created for us, but we did everything manually. Uh, the importance of this is that. In some cases, you will need to do some complex binding, and the wizard can cannot do that for you. So you need to understand how the binding works. So I think uh, I can now summarize the steps of binding. Basically, you will you will need what you will first need a table adapter, and you, you will use that table adapter to fold the data in the data set. The data set, of course, contains a number of tables. Now, uh, the tables you want to display should be connected to a binding source. If you are displaying data for, for multiple tables, in that case, you might need to use multiple binding sources on the form. Then, uh, you might need, uh, well, very likely you will need a binding navigator, so you connect this one to it. Uh, okay. Next, you place your controls on the form and then bind them to the binding source. Okay. The way controls get bound to the binding source is is kind uh, is different. For data grid views, you specify the binding source, uh, the binding source, and uh, you specify uh, sorry uh, sorry you specify the data source and the data number properties. For text boxes like these, you need to specify uh, the text a property inside the data binding, as you can see here. So each one has its own uh, binding method. And uh, since we are we are just talking about binding, uh, we might be tempted to well bind uh, the data grid view and these text boxes together, right? So let us try to do that. Uh, let me go to data. I don't want to start there. Uh, this data grid view. I'm dragging, dragging, dropping it here, and I will change this one. 
and I'm changing its binding to binding source over here and you can change that from the properties it's, it's the same uh, they just put the most common methods here in this uh, uh, small window so I'm gonna click this one and now we are gonna run this have a look so now I'm gonna change the current record and you can see that all the uh, all the controls get updated to reflect which record you are on right now okay so um, it's very straightforward, very easy. Um, so this is how you bind text boxes. Okay. Um, probably in the next video we'll talk about some of the controls uh, that you might need, uh, which which have kind of special binding, like uh, combo boxes and list boxes. Okay. We will look into into that uh, in the next videos. Uh, okay. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, have a wonderful day uh, and bye-bye.